Hello, I am Chris Sandman. Here I am uh, in New York City at the Upper West Side, and I'm going to be showing you the Shanasi Mansion here, uh, commissioned by none other than Morris Shanasi in uh, 1903. Um, let's take a look at the building. Okay. Here it is, Morris Shanasi's beautiful home, actually commissioned in, not 1903, commissioned in 1909. Um, Morris was an Ottoman Jewish immigrant who came to the U.S. in 1890. Um, he was a self-made man. He had really nothing when he came. He borrowed $25,000, which of course would have been a small fortune uh, from a friend, in order to get him to the U.S. to begin with. And um, he brought with him something very important, a machine, a machine that would change his family's fortune uh, because it was a cigarette rolling machine, the first one. Um, before that, cigarettes were all hand rolled, but Morris Shanasi had come up with this concept and he presents it at the Columbian Exposition in Chicago in 1893, a few years after he'd immigrated. And like, that's a really cool thing because it, uh, it, you know, it was a novel invention. So people were really interested in that. Um, and it soon started to take off. His brother joins him and they start the Shanasi Brother Company, um, which, uh, which features their Egyptian prettiest cigarettes rolled with Turkish tobacco because that's where they'd come from, the old you know, area of the Ottoman Empire. Um, after Shanazi had made his fortune, he met his wife in 1903 and they decided to build this mansion here on Riverside Drive. At the time, mansions were all being built around Park Avenue and Fifth Avenue, uh, and that's where you see a lot of those, you know, still today. But it was predicted back then in the early 1900s that people would get sick of the East Side and they'd start building mansions like this one all along um, the, uh, the Hudson River and Riverside Park up here in the, you know, on the West Side, the Upper West Side. That never actually happens. Um, but nonetheless, this one, uh, this mansion gets built. Um, and uh, Shanasi hires William, William Tuttle uh, as the architect for the mansion. Um, that relationship kind of soured and Tuttle ended up um, suing Shanasi actually for almost 6000 6, bucks because uh, like I said, not a great relationship. Um, and uh, Shanasi ends up living here with his wife, Lorette, and their three daughters, Victoria, Juliet, and Altina, for about 20 years. And in 1928, Shanasi died at the ripe old age of 71 years old. And uh, within a couple of years, the house, this mansion, was sold for the ripe sum of $200,000. Now, the reason why this building is so important and so rare and unique is that, as you can notice here, there's nothing attaching it on this side of the building, nor on this side of the building. In fact, this is the only detached, completely detached, single family residence in all of Manhattan. There are no buildings attached to this building on any of the four walls around it. Now, being completely detached allows the mansion to take advantage of treating all these four sides separately and individually. Um, and you can notice that this front facade, which is facing west towards Riverside Park, uh, it contains the main door um, and it's, you know, flush with the exterior there. Um, but if you look at this side over here instead, um, which is the, um, this is the north section um, and actually faces a neighboring building, right? It's actually the most elaborate decorative side of the building. Um, as we go around, you're going to be able to get a better sense of that. Um, uh, I'll talk more about the other sides as we get there, but it's also worth just pointing out as we do walk around this amazing building, look at this. Looks like something we've seen before on some of our other tours. I'm pretty sure it's a mounting stone um, for, for people to hop on their horses or to uh, get into carriages and such. Maybe it used to be a, a fountain or some other said, sort of um statue there but not today well, anyway back to the shanasi mansion um, so the longer facade of the mansion which we're going to see as we come around the side um, faces 107th street and that's where we are right now in the corner of 107th street in riverside drive looking at this standalone uh, building which makes it so friggin unique and special here in manhattan um, because it's the only one, the only building that is a single family residence that doesn't have uh, an, attached, an attached side to it as you go. So this building, it's huge. 
Um, it takes up a total of about 12,000 square feet, contains entertainment and service rooms in the basement. And the first floor has a gym, uh, servants' quarters, a dining room, a gallery, a waiting area, and two parlor rooms. As we pan up, the second and third levels contain many bedrooms and bathrooms, along with sitting areas and kitchens. And on the top floor, what we can't really see from this angle is a studio apartment. Um, there actually, in total, are 12 bedrooms, eight bathrooms, uh, and five kitchens. And when it was originally built, there was an English basement, which means that down here, I'll show you guys, you actually have a whole nother floor, which is its own apartment, and its own level. Uh, and it used to be that uh, back in Prohibition times, there was actually a secret tunnel that went from this basement all the way down to the Hudson River, which we aren't gonna be able to see, but it's just beyond those lines of trees. If you see a little bit of glintering light, uh, it's because that's the, the Hudson River over there on the west side. Um, so that tunnel now is gone. Like they sealed that up, uh, it's no longer there. Um, and um, even though this, this mansion was originally used as a family home, uh, after Shanasi dies uh, in 28 and uh, the family moves out, it had a whole bunch of different uses, um, including being like a girls' school. Um, it's been like filmed uh, in a couple of different TV shows and movies. And today it's owned by uh, a former Goldman Sachs executive whose name slips my mind, but uh, the most recent price they paid was he paid was on record $14 million, which is yeah, far cry more than the 200,000 that he might have originally, uh, they originally sold the house uh, for after Shinasi's passing. So um, the mansion is made up of various carved materials. On the interior, there's a mix of Egyptian carved marble, hand carved wood, uh, and hand painted frescoes. Within the wood interior, you also find a repeating symbol of the pineapple. Um, and the pineapple is this reoccurring symbol of hospitality that you often see uh, in a lot of uh, a lot of buildings. So um, this back part here is actually, whoop, zoom in. That's a a copper uh, extension there uh, coming out of the building. I like this side, although I can't really see the far side as well as much as you know as this side. Doing a little construction work in here, uh, which is pretty neat. And if I back away a little bit, we're able to also see uh, parts of the, the rooftop, which is made of mansard terracotta uh, and green tile. And then you can see up there some steel girders and, and more copper cornices as well. So there you go. That right there is a quick view of the Shinasi Mansion up here on 107th and Riverside. Who would have guessed? Thank you guys very much for watching that and I'll see you again very soon.